Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Pro Tools Answers where we discuss, demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools question put to us in the official Avid Pro Tools support forum on Facebook. My name is Dave Phillips, audio engineer and ACI and lecturer for Point Blank Music Schools and joining me is Anders at Tonecraft Work in Austria and lecturer and ACI for Siegen University in Germany. Hey, hi, hi. And Andy Hagerman, who is Avid's audio curriculum manager, and he's based all the way over in Tokyo. How's it going? <laughs> Thanks for joining me once again, guys. It's great to see you as always. Uh, now, what we're Good to be now back. what we're doing here is we we like to wade in on the forum post to throw our two cents, or or as Andy put earlier on about. Uh, 200 yen um, in but there's generally so much noise in the group and nuance in the circumstances that the right answers aren't always highlighted and that's what we aim to get to here um, now part of our job as lecturers and trainers is to take complex issues and then boil them down into clear explanations and demonstrations for our students to follow um, and hopefully that's what we're going to achieve uh, once again uh, now before I continue uh, please let me ask you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you're notified when our videos are released and of course uh, please like the video if you do and dislike the video if you don't today's problem comes to us from Tony from the avid Pro Tools users group and he says Hey, hey Tony, uh, I've got a click track set up for intro for song and need to change tempo for verse. How would you set up a second click track for verse? I hope this makes sense. I'm playing guitar. Once I get song down for, on guitar with click track, I then get drummer in. Um, so this is a really interesting question actually because it sounds relatively simple on the outset, but uh, what we can do with click in Pro Tools goes really quite beyond just setting up a simple click um, and then I think what the question is getting to is is setting up different tempos for different parts of songs or, or maybe even setting up different patches uh, for different parts of songs um, so we're going to uh, dive quite deep um, into how the click track for Pro Tools works today um, now unlike some doors uh, Pro Tools doesn't automatically start up with a click track, although we, we can set that up uh, to automatically happen. But what you're going to do is you're going to find the click track under the track menu, and all the way at the bottom we have create click track. Now I've got a basic session uh, set up on here, very much like Tony's uh, description, uh, which is just guitar and, uh, and voice. And then we'll bring our click track in. There, we'll drag that all the way up to the top. <coughs> And the click track is simply an auxiliary track with the click to plugin automatically uh, inserted onto that. And what is interesting about click is it doesn't necess it doesn't take its it, its prompts from any uh, uh, kind of MIDI track or anything like that. Although it, it is technically a MIDI instrument, it takes its cues from the internal MIDI clock. Um, and so it's you know unlike logic it's not built onto the actual interface of Pro Tools everything is dealt with within the auxiliary track and the click to plugin and because that's that's taking its cues from the uh, the main MIDI clock it's going to be taking its tempo from our tempo trap or rather it's going to be taking its cues from our tempo track don't fall into the tempo trap everyone <laughs> um, so we have this session set up for 146 BPM right now. Uh, so that's going to be the basic uh, tempo of our song. And what it sounds like uh, Tony wants to do is change the tempos uh, between the different sections of the track. And actually, this is, uh, and you guys may have a slightly different opinion to this, but from, from a rock, uh, pop, kind of country music guy like me, um, that, that's the, the stuff that I prefer to produce, um, is, and, and I, as I mentioned in the last episode, that I do a lot of work with MIDI, and I like to try and mimic a human performance uh, using the, the, the tempo grid. And what I mean by that is that when you're playing naturally in a band, there are some parts of the, uh, the song where you naturally speak speed up and there'll be some parts of the song where you naturally slow down and so if we start off our track in 146 BPM uh, we can add a tempo change uh, let's say here at, a, at around about was this bar zoom in a little bit <clears throat> at bar 19 we can add ourselves a tempo change there on the tempo bar uh, to speed up or slow our track down now to be able to understand how that is going to work in throughout the entire course of the song, um, 
it would be sensible to use the marker lane uh, right here, uh, the marker track, to insert markers in to denote the, the particular sections of the song. This could also be a visual representation, uh, representation for the musician uh, as they're following the track and playing the track through in the studio. Um, this can be accomplished if you have a second monitor or a, a, a breakout monitor into the live room uh, so the drummer or the musician can hear it on the cans but also see it on the screen as well so he kind of has a cue as to what's coming up. Um, but we can uh, we can activate the the marker track uh, with our show hide uh, show hide menu up here, and then just show markers, and then we can either use the little plus icon here with our cursor at the particular place that we want to place our marker. We can press press plus, and then we can type in the name of our marker, click OK, um, and then that will instigate the marker onto our our marker lane and therefore also our timeline. We could do the same with bridge, uh, choruses, etc, etc. So you can build up a structure of your song. That will also help you decide where you're going to put in uh, your tempo changes. Um, so if we wanted to insert a tempo change onto verse 1, um, we can click on the tempo bar right here with control and that will bring up our tempo change. Now if we boost that all the way up to, let's make it really quick, let's make it 160 and we can see everything after that compress and then we'll again hold down control and we'll click and we'll set it back to 146 for our bridge and then we'll set it at 167 for our chorus so we can see each of the, um, we can see the bars and beats compress uh, and expand as we put on our tempo changes. Now let's just put the click, uh, let's just put the playback cursor right there. And if I just, I'm just gonna mute my client's track. <laughs> <coughs> so all we should hear now is the click playback. Okay, that, that, that didn't do what I wanted to do. Let's just, solo our click, we'll hit play and we should hear the click uh, respond to the tempo changes. So this is going to speed up to 160. And then 160 down to 146. Grammy. I, I, it's, it's a particularly <laughs> special click. I, I picked a special one. <laughs> Grammy. So as long as those tempo changes exist on the tempo bar and you've got the conductor track on, um, your click is going to follow each of those changes. And if you, again, if your drummer is, is practiced with that, he should be able to follow those changes quite naturally during a recording session. If you can set up a breakout monitor, um, you can actually have your drummer following those visually uh, in the studio while he's recording. Now it's probably worth noticing that this might not be particularly important for some of you guys who are doing EDM stuff uh, because EDM is typically just one tempo, isn't it, all the way through and that could help uh, that if you were to start introducing some of the kind of the human tempo changes into those that might also break uh, the beat matching possibilities for DJs. So this is something that will be quite important I think for the pop guys, the rock guys, uh, indie guys, folk guys, any anything where it's not necessarily going to be mixed heavily in, in nightclubs, you know. <laughs> that being said, I, I mean, I, I, I hate to disagree. I don't want to be fired on the third episode. Um, but <laughs> not at all. You know, it's. <laughs> but it you know, I, mean, it's, it's, I, I think you know, it, it. What you're talking about, Dave, is um, a tempo change that is not basically something that you'll you'll say, oh, there's a tempo change, but it's something that you kind of kind of feel viscerally. Um, so we're talking just a few beats per minute and it goes up just just as like a little bit of an adrenal, adrenaline yes. rush for the drummer yep. and it just pushes it just ever so slightly and, and if and by the way if you push it too much where it's obviously a different tempo it's probably way way too much it's mm. just that it's 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 it it nudges it just a little bit and then once you're back into the verse then then you nudge it back down so you kind of get that normal 
kind of adrenaline, you know, kind of sensibility. And I've done this with electronic music, music that you would not think would would be heavily thought of in terms of a mm. tempo map. But you do that and you start to get this kind of emotion that you didn't have before mm. just by taking mm. that chorus and yeah. just just ever so slightly just bringing it up. Yeah, I've, I've been doing that um, a, a few times as well, yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, I, uh, I was using larger larger increments really just to demonstrate on the thing. Sure, sure. You, you certainly wouldn't. Yeah, that's you certainly wouldn't go from a hundred and you know jump twelve dB in in a single tick. <laughs> Which you <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, great stuff, Dave. Uh, that's a great ways to do it. Do you, do you want me to uh, to move on? Yeah, please on? do. Okay. So pick up the the. Um, the, the next next segment here. Um, can you see my screen now? Sure can. Okay, great. Uh, so I got a little track here and I've got a couple of uh, tempo changes as, as, as well. Uh, and as Dave mentioned here, you need a click track to be able to, to play back the, the, uh, the actual uh, click in Pro Tools. Well, it's not like Pro Tools doesn't have a metronome built in all, all the time, uh, it Protos actually does. Mm -hmm. It's just the the plugin, the click plugin, plugin isn't inserted on the channel when you start Protos usually. Basically, not to so that isn't so that it doesn't uh, take any way any system resources for you if you don't need it. Yeah, plus, not everyone um, needs it, do they? Exactly. If you're working yep. in post production or or something like that, you will probably never ever use a metronome. Mm -hmm. That's why there is not a click track active. But if you if you always need one, go to setup preferences and under the MIDI tab, uh, there is a, a way to automatically create click track in new sessions. Uh, by the way, I heard some time when I was visiting Avid that this is the most requested feature in Pro Tools. Uh, <laughs> one that's already there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, uh, so, uh, and I think uh, a, a lot of things are, are requested for Pro Tools all of the time that are actually already in Pro Tools, and this is one of them. Yeah. Um, so if you always need a, a, a metronome active in Pro Tools and you, can, you want to be able to hear the click track, you, you make sure this one is, is mm. checked. Um, so, um, uh, and Dave also mentioned that the Click 2 plugin is basically just taking this MIDI beat clock and and providing the clicking sound. So when I press play here, uh, you can hear the metronome clicking with its uh, usual um, uh, clickiness that it usually does. Um, uh, by the way, a, a great thing um, with, with the metronome is that you can um, you don't have to mute the click track to 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 not hear it. Uh, if you click on the little metronome icon in the transport window, or even better still, if you press number seven on your numerical keypad, you can turn off on and off the metronome sound or the, the click plugin sound actually. And that's a, a great feature. So, what are the, the settings that you can can use to to um, to personalize this click uh, sound? Uh, you obviously have the Click to plugin that does the clicking, and you can set the 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 sound that it should use for the accented click, uh, which is the click one, and the unaccented click, um, and uh, you can also set. The, the the overall volume of those clip, uh, clicks. Uh, but also in the actual click setup, um, you can get to that by clicking setup. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, setup, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, why can't I see it? Sorry, I'm, I'm just having a blackout right now. Click count off. It's the second oh, yeah. from the bottom. <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah. laughs> okay, uh, so you can actually set up the, the, the click as well by hitting set up click count off, which will open this click count of options uh, setup thing. I usually don't do that. I just double click the metronome icon here to open up the same setup uh, thing. Um, you can set up when the click should happen during play and record. I usually always have that function on. Um, 
and only during record or only during count off. Uh, what I will do is is that I, if I don't want the, the metronome to click while I'm recording, I'll just hit the key seven to turn the metronome sound on and off uh, the, the way that I show you uh, just previously. But you can also um, set up any MIDI instrument, or in my case right now, I'm using an external synthesizer um, or external drum machine that's over there on my table. So I'm outputting the MIDI uh, uh, click to my TR uh, TR08 channel 10 um, and and uh, so if I mute my metronome I'll actually mute it now uh, so and unmute my drum machine uh, you can hear uh, sorry that's the one <laughs> uh, you can actually you can actually hear the metronome being played through my hardware uh, synthesizer instead. So you could set up any software synthesizer or hardware synthesizer that you might want to use to to do the clicking if you if uh, you want that to happen. Uh, Andy, you know, I'll, I'll, it's interesting that you mentioned that you always have it always on during play and record. Because I'll be honest, I always only have it on during record, and I think that's that's one of the interesting things about you know about pro tools in general if i can get meta on this you know the, if there's one thing about pro tools that is daunting is that it's so flexible right yeah. that you could do everything on it so it's it's almost like you can't do anything on it easily but you can it just takes a little mm -hmm. bit of demystifying and for that purpose we have pro tools answers so that's what we're here to do <laughs> <laughs> um so so yeah so let me jump in here um and talk about basically how we can maybe work with tempos in the in the tempo ruler because you know once you've got the the click happening um you know you might want to at some point to uh you know actually kind of make that that tempo map your own now now what dave showed you in terms of of selecting an area and uh creating a, a different tempo that you could certainly do that so for example let's say that this selected area is is my is my verse i could use the the trim tool and i could drag it up like that great that's easy um but let's think about some other ways that we can work with tempo that maybe work a little bit better in a real life situation and the first real life situation is this very rarely are you going to get a person coming into your music studio you're going to ask them how fast the song is and they'll go 110 because they don't know what the tempo of their song is. What the, what are they going to do? They're going to do this. They're going to click it out for you. Now, what number is that? I don't know. But if you wanted to, you could always change the tempo. That's, and one of the uh, great that's 115, by the way, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> So, it's on you then. Uh, so, so what? You, what basically, what you're going to do instead of doing that is you can, while they're clicking their fingers, hit the T key. So what? Why did? And of course, I hit 120. Why? Because this is a fault. Uh, uh, one of the Pro Tools, and that's what I hear all the time. Let's go here. Let's do something about uh, this. Let's go. Great. So it's 81. Great, fantastic. Now, the other thing is, that you want to take a look at when you're talking about a click is the click resolution. And so many people click beyond this. And this is something we were talking about before the show, and I'm going to talk to you guys about it now, is if you've got a meter that's four four time, that bottom four of the time means that a quarter note gets a beat. And at that point, you know, your click resolution is one beat. That's the default. Everybody uses that as their normal click. However, there are some meters that are compound meters for example 12 8 or 9 8 or 6 8 and whenever you see those most of the time when those meters are being used they want for example if it's 6 8 they don't want six clicks they want two so it's one two three two two three one two three two two three and the click resolution to make your click work correctly is going to be something called a dotted quarter note 
Now, a quarter note, if you know music theory, is two eighth notes. If you add a dot to it, then it adds half of that note back to it. Okay, so a dotted quarter note is going to be worth three eighth notes, and that's where you get this. So if I had you know six eight time, it's going to be one two three four five six one two three four five six. And if it was twelve eight time, it'd be the same thing one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve, and that's going to be what you're going to want to give your musicians. The other thing that I'll say is this: I'll change this back to the default. Um, is now I've got my tempo and what. What I want to do real quickly here is I want to kind of ease into that tempo change that that uh, Dave did, and a couple ways I can do it, and and different methods are going to give you different flexibility, and I want to just speed up the tempo just a little bit over here. Um, I could use the pencil tool, and probably the the quickest way to to draw a a nice gradual linear change is going to be with the line version of the pencil tool and I can go ahead and draw a little line at this point great fantastic and the cool thing about using the pencil tool is when you're drawing a, pen, a, a tempo change you're going to get these two little blue handles and so I could always kind of change the position of that and and change how much I'm going to do it or or how long I'm going to take to do it now once I click out of there I lose my handles so so be careful that's one of the ways that you you're going to work now if you go into the more involved curve so you can do a parabolic curve let's do an s curve just for fun if you want to ease in and ease out of that tempo change which is something i often like to do you're going to get something like this and you now have four different handles so you can change you know how much you're going to uh, work on it you could also change the center of the curve and how much it eases in and eases out and if you don't want your your tempo change to be that noticeable these kinds of things can really kind of help you out and, and again you've got the, the these nice little blue handles I'm gonna undo this here's another way you could do it um, undo, eh. there we go now let's say that here's the area I'll change this a little bit say that this is the area right here where I want to do my tempo change this is the area leading up to let's say a verse where I want to get three beats per minute faster okay something something pretty pretty mild um, what I could do instead of using the pencil tool is I can go up here into event now event is usually where you're gonna find everything that has to do with time or MIDI and so what I'll do is I'll go into tempo operations and I'm gonna ask my client my client today is Anders Anders do you want yeah. a, a linear change or do you want to ease into it how how without getting too specific you know how do you want it to to move, do you want it to move linearly or, or curve, or how do you? Yeah, it, it should steadily move up to that tempo. Linear will be great. Okay, great. So, so we'll go with linear. And so, what I'm going to do, you can see down here that the beginning of my selected area is over here, and the tempo is 81. And what did I say? Uh, so, Anders, you're my customer. How much? How much do you want to kind of ease that up by how many beats per minute? Uh, I think uh, let's go 84 at the end. Then. 84. Okay, that's that's a yeah. bold choice, Grammy. All right. So now we go over here and then boom and apply and now it wrote in that specific change now notice here that once you make that change you don't get any handles so if you wanted to yeah. undo it it's it's control z um if you wanted to go with one of the more advanced uh ways of, of putting that in you do have the ability to change your curve you know and change where the the center of that curve is and change your in and outs and all that stuff so you you do have a couple of different ways that you can work with with the different curves and, and defining their shape. Uh, let's see here. I think that's about it. Okay, great. Uh, do you want me to um, uh, to do a little bit more about uh, what you can do once you have a tempo map and uh, uh, and you need to to play along with it, but uh, but it can all, sometimes also be a little bit pro problematic. You want me to take that? Do it. Okay, so I'm um, doing. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Can you screen, see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So I have this song here, and it's starting out at 115 BPM. And uh, over here, I did a linear tempo change, just like Andy just uh, showed us, where it basically takes us from 115 down to 85, and then back up hard again up to 115. It sounds something like this currently. 
So now we're coming up to the linear tempo change. We can hear the tempo going down. And suddenly we're back up to 115. <coughs> Maybe that's uh, the effect that I want to go with. Um, and uh, if I wanted to record some drums over this now, and I'll try to do my best, uh, but I, I will I will probably fail at this <laughs> now. But, but I, I, I Input quantizes my... your friend. <laughs> Don't tell them my <laughs> secret. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just hitting record here, and by the way, I'm actually using input quantizer. Nice. <laughs> but but um, I, I'm hitting record, and I'll try to to play along with this. Um, you can imagine the problems I'm getting when I'm going from 85 to 115. So I'll just try it. And you can hear me count off here and. <laughs> just failed miserably there. So that's that's really hard to do, and uh, it can sound really musically uh, correct, but but uh, but it's sometimes hard to do this. And so we, we actually have a way of of of, of doing this uh, a bit uh, uh, a bit more easier. Uh, Dave mentioned that we have this tempo track up here, and the tempo track is like a tempo map where all our tempo changes. Uh, go and uh, in the transport window we have this little guy down here it looks like harry P potter is like ab about to use his magic wand or, or something but it's actually the conductor uh, the conducting the orchestra and we can see that the conductor track is now active meaning protos will play through all of the tempo changes and actually perform them but if i turn off the conductor track I get into something called the manual tempo mode. We can see that up here in our tempo uh, track that it says manual tempo. And that manual tempo is 95. By the way, I can set it to anything I, I'd like in the tempo um, field here. If I click into this, I can use the same technique as Andy did, or was it Dave? Sorry, I think it was Andy. Andy. <coughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And you can just hit the T to start uh, tapping your tempo. Uh, but let's uh, say I'm, I'm pretty bad at, at playing everything that has keyboards in them, so <laughs> I'll stick to <laughs> tempo 85 here. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and this will just ignore all of the tempo changes. I don't even see them up in my tempo ruler anymore. They're just invisible. So I'm stuck here in manual tempo, which is right now set to 85. So I'll just start recording now. So it's very slow. Maybe I can manage. And so on. Um, so this is the recording, and when I now get back to my conductor track and I turn on Harry Potter again, or the conductor track, <laughs> I, um, uh, Protus will actually um, perform all of, uh, all of the tempo changes, and since, <coughs> since this MIDI track is in ticks, it will adapt to the tempo changes, so now it will be probably be perfect in tempo all of the way through the tempo changes. Performs yeah, that's that. really cool. That harps back to episode one, doesn't it? Where we were talking about uh, the, the difference between six and samples. So, um, yeah, indeed. and that's 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 the key thing for that particular technique, isn't it? The understanding that the notes that you've recorded in uh, um, with the conductor track off, they're linked to the the bars and beats grid. And when you turn it back on and reinstigate all of those tempo changes, it all of those notes that are locked to the bars and beats grid get shifted along to the particular point that they're supposed to be at. Really clever. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, uh, a couple of more but things that you could um, uh, mention about the, the, the metronome uh, click. I, I said uh, I, I always have um, the, the during play and record on. That doesn't mean that I always have the metronome audible when I'm actually playing mm. to a recording. But I use my number seven key on the numpad to, to manually uh, m mute and unmute it, uh, uh, as you would say. Uh, and I, that works in playback and record as well, where you can instantly uh, engage or disengage the metronome. Another feature that I use quite a lot is the, the count off feature, which is set to two bars here. And you can use number eight on your numerical keypad to turn the count off on <coughs> and off. And I usually don't need uh, uh, a count off when I'm in, 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 uh, in playback. So I have this function only during record the count off is only when i record because it i would get old before i <laughs> <laughs> like if i always had to hear two uh, two uh, bars of metronome before i listen to my song yeah the count off could <laughs> be useful old. if you if you started your song at bar one uh, at absolute zero isn't it because yeah. you've got no by default yep. anyway you've got no space before yep. that so you need some kind of metronome again you can go did, did we touch on that on episode one as well where you can move we the, did indeed i think we did yes yeah. so yep. you you can yep. move yep. the bar one point on Some the timeline so go, you can yep. have a look back on episode one to see to see that in yeah. action and uh, <laughs> if you if you um it's a link to that exactly here right now right <laughs> <laughs> i'll make sure i put Dave. it there <laughs> <laughs> and nowhere else. <laughs> you, you know, it's it, it's interesting. I don't think we actually have gotten around to answering Tony's initial question. No, you don't need to create two different tracks. So the the thing is, um, the one click track with with the metronome plugin can do whatever you need to do in a single track, which is great, right? So so you don't need two different click tracks because that's mm -hmm. just you know one extra thing that you would have to worry about keeping keeping in mind. Now not only by the way will that click track change its its tempo as 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 Anders and I and, and Dave have shown, mm -hmm. but I think it, if I could I'd like to pick up on on what Anders did. Now Anders what Anders did was fantastic. You know, if you're working with, you know, you 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 just basically suspend the tempo map and then you've got, you know, a different playing field literally. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you're a live drummer or you're, you're working with an orchestra or anything like that, and you've got a tempo change, sometimes when you get down to those slow tempos, you can get into some serious trouble. So let me, let me go ahead here. So what I've got over here, we'll go ahead and do an edit cut over here, and let me set up everything. You guys are seeing what I've got, right? Of course. Yeah, I'm sure. So you, you, can, you can edit this out. Um, so what I've got here is a starting tempo of, I guess, around 81 and an ending tempo of 42. Now, 42 is an awful slow tempo. And if I was an orchestra mm -hmm. conductor, I would be beating out a very slow beat. It's very hard to, you know, to, to find that. And if you've got multiple mm -hmm. players, they'll, they'll fall apart at this point. So what we tend to do is we tend to subdivide the beat. So instead of going one, two, three, four, we'll go one and two and three and four. Four, and that gives us more little increments that we as human beings can can latch on to. Now, there's two different ways you can do this, okay? One of them is going to be to change the meter. Um, and so if I go in here and I'm showing meter, um, what Dave showed you as, as adding a tempo change, you can use that same shortcut to add a meter change. And so what will happen here is I'm gonna go to here at bar seven, and I'm going to add a meter change, bump, and what I'm going to do is I snap to bar, great. Right? Um, start at bar seven, yes, fantastic. I'm going to change my click resolution to instead of being a quarter note, I'm going to change it to be an eighth note. And what I'm going to hear great. <laughs> so it'll play and it's getting softer. Uh, we can't. And what it's done is it's subdivided, right? So now it's subdividing. The only problem is, is that they're all the same tone, okay? So that's the one downside of that. It's, it, it, will, it will give you more beeps, but it doesn't 
tell you which is a downbeat, and sometimes that can get confusing. The other way you can work this, and I'm going to undo this tempo change, is to have the plugin not follow the meter. Now, if you turn off follow meter, you now have all this control. If, it, if follow meter is on, then you can't change anything in click one or two. You can change the levels, but you can't change the, the resolutions because it's following the meter and it will, it will do whatever changes are in the meter. If you turn this off, what I can do is I can set up a secondary click to be on eighth notes. And what I can do over here is, I'll bring this down and I could automate this. And I could automate this just like any other plugin, and I could start to bring this up. And the cool thing about this method is it does have two different tones. So you can clearly tell which one is the downbeat and which one is the offbeat. Two different ways to work. They're just they're just two mm -hmm. different methods. <clears throat> and you can choose whichever one is better for yourself. But especially if you're working with slow tempos with a live musician or or even worse a, a group of musicians those slow tempos can be killers but being able to use your click resolution or to be able to use the click plugins follow meter command is is going to help you get out of that kind of a jam i'm glad you were talking about that kind of customization with the plugin because i wanted to talk about that next so you've kind of dealt with I'm with the majority of it for me <laughs> but I, I wanted to talk about it in the context of of drummers and musicians that want different tones in their clicks because some some as i i think i mentioned before some want to work with cowbells some want to work with triangles and it's it will be to do with the, the frequency content that their ear responds to uh, uh over the music that they're playing to um and, and some people just want different click sounds don't they and it's the same thing with with having your your downbeats accented with the, the and having the rest of the beats uh work on a, a a different volume or a different tone some musicians will even want no accents whatsoever you know they just want to to kind yeah. of feel it naturally and not have the click pointing them to where the the, the downbeats are so that that click two plugin is so ridiculously customizable um it, it's it's a really smart little system sorry i'm having some uh, some delay here okay um and one thing that you um um that you don't want to forget is that in the click plugin if you if you're making these perfect settings that you want to use over and over mm -hmm. again you can always save your settings into um into the uh, the plugin itself, uh, save settings uh, and uh, and make a setting that you want to use over and over. Yeah, again. and I have a couple of those for different drummers that I work with. Um, yeah, that's a great <coughs> idea. Let me show something here since we're we're having this conversation um, about multiple clicks and 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 Dave's 100% right 0% wrong you know that you're going to get people who really get precious about oh it's got to be this sound or that sound or the other but yeah. even if they're not precious about the sound the timbre in in a recording situation rarely do two musicians playing together want the click to be the same volume clicks are usually something people yeah. want almost all the way up if you're a drummer or a bass player or mm -hmm. maybe almost all the way down if you're if you're doing some other instrument that relies on the drums right <laughs> so you're going to want to create different mixes for everybody so one of the one of the things you can do and there's a couple of great little shortcuts in here is i've got my my uh, session here, and I've got a whole bunch of different stems, um, all used using Pro Tools new folder tracks, which are fabulous. And I've got two different click tracks over here. And let's let's assume, for the sake of argument, that these are two different click sounds, right? So they're different click, maybe click resolutions. They're two different, completely different setups. Now, in my I/O setup, I've set up in my buses. I've set where are you? Um, Q1, Q2, where are you? Oh, I, I don't have Q1 and Q2. Let me go ahead and set that up. <laughs> uh, go ahead and stop. I thought I, you, I we'll, we'll edit this out. Um, I thought for sure I created Qs. <coughs> All right, so I've got two different Q... Uh, So we'll call this Q1, and we'll call this one Q2. I knew I'd set that up, but I guess I didn't save it. 
and we're going to I'm going to ma uh, map these to outputs for different headphones. Great, fantastic. Bob's your uncle. Now, what I want to do at this point is I'm going to use a send to create a cue mix that goes across, and and I'm going to hold down the option key, and I'm going to create a send that goes to an output, and that output for this send is going to be Q1. Boom, and we're done with that. And I go ahead and hold down the command key and we'll maximize that. And I'm gonna have another one over here that goes out Q2, boom. And I'm gonna hold down the command key so we can see that. Now here's where life starts to get pretty good if you're Pro Tools Ultimate user. I'm gonna select all my tracks and you'll see all of these cues are, are all of these sends for the cues are all now at minus infinity. So I'd have to bring them all up and do a whole bunch of customization. And it's gonna be very hard for me to get the same kind of mix as I'm having on my main mixer, except, check this out. I'm gonna to go to automation and I'm gonna copy to send. And I'm gonna copy the current value. You can copy the automation if you want to. I don't generally speaking, but you can. I'm gonna copy the current value for volume to send A and boom and now that has been cop everything on my main fader has now been copied up here great let's do the same thing one more time copy to send copy this to send b and in by the way at this point now you you have most of your work done for you but if somebody wants to customize if for example if the the bass player wants to be louder in Q2 or softer in Q2, you can you can customize this mix. And since I now have two different clicks, I can mute the click on, I can mute click one on send one, and I can mute click two on send two. And now each person in their own Q mix is hearing only the click that they want to hear. Yeah. Now, that's a nice little work, uh, a nice little workflow. But does, does that not require the sends to be on prefade mode? Oh, they completely do. Mm. <laughs> they completely do. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great trick, uh, Andy. Yep. Yep. That, you, um, thank you for for keeping me honest. That I was going too quick. <laughs> uh, that's uh, lovely. Uh, one thing. Uh, one one thing that um, um, when I first read this question, I understood it quite differently than uh, than you did, Dave. I understood it like if you have an intro, let's say in 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 a slow tempo. And then you start your verse at a higher tempo. How can you make the click actually do the clicking like a, a, a count off in the tempo that's about to come? Uh, do you understand what I mean? So yeah. um, because the, 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 the click plugin will, 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 will click the, the tempo stupidly uh, until the, the actual uh, place occurs, mm. like I have right here, where my tem tempo changes to 115 from 85. So how, I, how can I make the click uh, um, click the 115 tempo here as a count off? Um, so what you can do is, um, uh, or what I, what I usually do is, I will select one bar or two bars, depending on how, how long you want the, the count off to be. And I'll just right click this guy right here and select commit and it will commit the edit selection right here and uh, insert after the last selected tracks and with the source tracks do nothing meaning i still want to keep my my metronome right so i'll hit ok and protus will now render this click plugin as audio and put it on a new audio track that's such a great that's such a great tip you you, you um, guys are trying to outdo each other's sugar cubes aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and now what i'll do is i'll position my my um uh, my insertion where i want it to click to and i'll go to 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 the grabber tool and hold control command on a mac and click on this little clip and that will insert it so that the end of the clip will go to the insertion. So now, if I mute the click right here, I actually get the click, the 115 click, starting two bars before, which will sound really, really strange, but I'll mute uh, the, the drum machine here, and you can hear that click here. So that's a two bar count off in tempo 115. 
That's great. You know, I don't. I've never done that before, <laughs> but that makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> See, this is, and this is the thing is. It's not hard. It's none of this no. stuff. Look look at the three of us. You guys that are yep. watching us on YouTube, none of us look like we have a brain in our heads. But we can still figure this out because all it boils down to is like 10 things. And if you yes. put those 10 things in the right combination, you get anything to happen. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. And one thing that I would like to add, a couple of these techniques that we're using are are a little bit more advanced, but most of the stuff we've talked about in this channel so far is what you find in the very first Pro Tools PTO 101 course, uh, which is the Avid, uh, Avid official courseware, uh, which is a great course. Uh, you can just pick up the book and, and read that one, and it will teach you a lot about how stuff really works underneath the bonnet. It does. And there's an upcoming, by the way, an upcoming Pro Tools first book that is like a, oh. a Pro Tools 101 for the Pro Tools first application that's coming up. Wow, soon. that's fantastic. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, one thing that I wanted to interject with on when Andy was talking about the routing side uh, and getting the headphones to different different musicians with their outputs. You know, Andy was routing to the physical outputs on his interface, um, but what that is going to require is a headphone amp, isn't it? Because the the yeah. you know interfaces are outputting mm -hmm. at line level, you need to have that that amplified for headphones. Um, one thing that is quite clever with certain interfaces, this doesn't work with with every interface for sure, but I know that this is a, a feature of Focusrite specifically, is that the the, the two headphone outputs um, are on different buses aren't they? So headphone one is usually on your, your regular output one and two bus, and the second headphone output is could be configurable to any of the others, maybe on three and four, but certainly some of the interfaces I've seen, uh, you can configure them to any of the output buses at all. So mm -hmm. if you're working in a, a small production space with one interface, two musicians, uh, or one musician and a producer rather, um, you can have one of those headphone outputs configured to receive the click channel or uh, a, a headphone cue channel rather, and the producer working on the main output one and two bus. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of uh, interfaces. Probably most of them these days allow you in the in the hardware setup to assign the headphone outputs to either mirror the main output or to mm -hmm. mirror something else. Mm -hmm. Just exactly yeah. for that. And mm -hmm. um, and with the so my Omni does over here, and um, and I believe the uh, the Matrix Studio has two two headphone yeah. outputs mm -hmm. that that allow you to do that same kind of thing. Uh, I I think the original question was what well, if I remember back to the original question it was all about how do you set up different clicks for different parts of the song haven't we mm -hmm. so I, I I think we definitely covered that and a whole the bunch country. more and a lot more <laughs> that was really interesting yeah. so I think we can tie off unless there's anything else that you guys want to interject with any more sugar cubes uh, oh, oh we got to keep some. We really got to keep some sort of the next one. Come on, come on, come on. Good answer. Yeah, that's. Uh, and there's one uh, really, really important thing. Uh, you should uh, definitely like this video and subscribe to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and hit the bell icon uh, so you get notifications when we upload these things. Uh, we haven't sorted out our schedule yet, but uh, we're just on the precipice of, of launching. So uh, um, we'll be able to give some specific schedule information probably in the next video. Um, and. You know, please, if you have any questions about how Pro Tools works, stick them in that Avid support forum. I'll stick the link down in the uh, in the description. That's where we take a majority of our questions uh, and our subjects from. Um, how we might develop that in the future, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, to see how things go and how things develop. Um, I'm certainly having a great time doing this. Uh, I hope you guys are too. <laughs> and I hope you guys are having good fun watching it and you're getting a lot from it and it's really helping you in your in your studio. Uh, so all it leaves me to say is thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much to Anders. Thank you very much. And thank you to Andy. My pleasure. <laughs> this has been Pro Tools Answers. My name's Dave and we're out. <laughs>